Welcome back. Well, you may have noticed the absence of a bad cat today. Uh, Audie is outside running around enjoying a nice sort of late spring, almost summer day. Uh, I, I am surprised. Usually as soon as he sees me try to set up a video, he's just right there. It's like me, me, me. Um, he's ready for his close-up, Mr. DeVille. But if he does come back while I'm filming this, I'll get him. I'll bring him in. I'll let him say hi. So today, as you know, we have two things on the agenda. We have the survival, survival supplies unboxing. And we have the little mini can opener giveaway blitz. So that one, by the way, takes place at noon. So if you are one of the early birds catching this when it posts at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we've got four more hours. So when we get back, we'll get into it. This package is from Barbara Harrington, otherwise known as Flowing Brook. And those of you who follow the comments on uh, my videos will see her as Flowing Brook. That's, that's one of the things she comments as. So, well, actually, I believe, believe it's the only thing. I said that as if she has multiple aliases. Well, if she does, I don't know it, and I would have no idea why she has multiple aliases. Um, I don't think she's a criminal or anything, but let's take a look at what we've got here. Now, all right, bubble wrap, all right, American Family Supply Grandma's Granola. This is whole grain rolled oats, um, whole grain rolled wheat, brown sugar, oat flour, canola oil. Um, whoa, let's see if we've got an expiration on that because most of that stuff looks like it could last virtually forever. No, I'm not seeing an expiration date, but I am willing to bet that it is far, far, far in the distant future because ingredients like that are, are just, they're virtually designed for storage. And when they're stored in cans, boy, will they last a serious long time. So, I told you guys that she was, um, what was it? She was prepared. I don't like to use the word prepper because it brings up bad images in people's minds. But this is the sort of product that people who are prepared for emergencies get. Um, ordinarily, one would call it prepper products. But hey, you know, this is, this is nothing weird and there is no manifesto printed on this. So we don't have to worry. But uh, I do know, and you all know, because we went through this once before when she sent us, this is, Lord, close to a year ago, she sent us pictures of her beautiful old home, and it's off in Kentucky somewhere in a small town. It's very old, and she is restoring this. And, uh, all right, correct me if I'm wrong, my recollection is she's doing this jointly with her brother. And as I recall, the house is early 1800s. I, I'm going to say 1830s, that's a guess. It's older than the schoolhouse, which is 1852. I do remember that because naturally when I saw the date of hers, I got very jealous. But so this is someone who has all the right factors in her life for being prepared. Old house, 
um, being in an area that is inclined to have bad winters or bad rains, um, I'm assuming it's the bad snows in Kentucky, it's a very New England sort of mindset. That's what I grew up with, uh, which is why I say, you know, we were in old houses, power failed. Um, our power lines were very exposed, not like in places you see out in the West where they've got them all underground and whatnot. No, 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 no. You know, I, I swear some of the power lines in New England have probably been up since Thomas Edison put them up himself. Uh, very prone to failure. So you take people who live in situations like that, preparedness becomes second nature. So we have we have Grandma's granola. This is very exciting. All right. Oh, we got another. Let's look at this. Mountain House Chicken Teriyaki with Rice. Gee, look at that. Now, let's take a look at this. Storage and handling. Um, You don't want to store them above 72 degrees. Package is sold by weight, not volume. Um, contents should be used when once opened. Um, where's it, a cup? A cup of dry mix ingredients. This is remarkably easy. Ingredients. Cooked chicken, soy sauce, brown sugar, bamboo shoots, mushrooms, red pepper, green peas, modified cornstarch, Sherry wine, which contains sulfite. The wines contain all kinds of weird stuff. Onions, green pepper, garlic powder, spice, salt, rice, pre-cooked rice. Nothing on ball in there at all. This is lovely. So if anything goes wrong now, I can invite the neighbors so. over. Woven whole wheat crackers. Very nice. Now I'm starting to wonder if I shared the cracker story with you folks. I'm afraid I must have. Um, when I go out shopping hungry, I buy crackers. It's like a thing among my friends. They will come in, they will open my cabinets, they find two or three boxes of crackers and say, you've been shopping hungry again, haven't you? Or They'll see me coming home from the store. There'll be a box of crackers you didn't eat before you went shopping. I don't know what it is. It's just some weird thing. I know that it's not smart to shop on an empty stomach. In my case, it's controllable because I buy crackers. And if I'm hungry and I load my cart up with crackers, before I get to the checkout, I put all the crackers back and say, okay, I'm just shopping hungry because now I know the process. But yeah, crackers are my go-to when I'm feeling hungry. No idea why. And seeing as Flowing Brook has included some crackers, I'm beginning to wonder if I shared that story and forgot about it. Oh, penne regate. Um, this is a very nice... Uh, pasta. If you're not familiar with this, they're like macaroni noodles, only they're not curved, like straight macaroni noodles. Um, very tasty. Penne is great for holding a lot of sauce. Um, the same as macaroni because the sauce will get inside the noodles and it's also really good for baking because there's a great deal of noodle surface, both the inside and the outside, to absorb the sauce. Uh, I like penne. It's one of the pastas I cook with a great deal, and it also makes a fantastic cold macaroni salad. So if you want to make a cold macaroni salad, this is where you go. Go to penne um, and leave the little elbows, and people will be very impressed because it's cute and it looks much more sophisticated. And this is called salad shells, and these are just good-sized shells. Once again, these are fantastic uh, if you have a pasta and you want the sauce. Uh, 
because the little shells will fill up with sauce. They're also great for baking. Um, as you can see here, they're obviously great for cold salads. There are so many different kinds of pastas on the market. And for those of us who were not fortunate enough to grow up in Italian neighborhoods, we know about spaghetti, we know about macaroni. That's probably about it. If you go through, there are tiny little itsy bitsy pieces. There are little bow ties. You can get um, three colored pastas. Uh, they're, the red ones are, well, they're sort of orange, are flavored with tomato and the green ones with spinach. And they really make a great presentation. Um, you can get spaghetti and angel hair and fettuccine and linguine. And, um, so how do I know this once again? New England. You, New England has so many Italian neighborhoods. No matter where you grow up in the suburbs of Boston, you've spent time in Little Italy. You've gone to restaurants there. So, or, you know, you have friends who live there. So you end up knowing your pasta pretty well. Um, and I love different kinds of pasta. And some people will say they, they all taste the same. And I don't know, maybe, but I don't think so. I think they're all a little different. Hard candies. All right. Well, I guess she really won me over with this. And this is just, you know, what's the point of going through a disaster if you can't have a little something to nibble on that's fun? And uh, this goes back to what I was saying about the, uh, the fancy coffees I get and the little uh, the fun stuff. I believe this is especially true if you have children. You must include fun items. You can feed people without treats. You can keep them strong and healthy. You throw enough vitamins into your survival stash and you can probably feed people the same thing day in, day out. Eventually, appetite fatigue will set in and they just won't want to eat anymore. But it's not fun. You need to be able to throw fun things in. And hard candies, by the way, are great because they can serve a number of purposes that, that are legitimate. And this is how you... This is how you justify throwing hard candies in. You know, if you have to take a long trek and you don't have enough water, sucking on a hard candy is going to cause you to salivate when it's going to make it easier for you to go without water. So I'm going to have to go look it up. I had a friend who was uh, a candy junkie. And she could go on for hours about chocolate having a chemical composition that... that um, what was it? It imitates uh, the pheromones your body produces, or no, the hormones your body produces. And, you know, when you're in love, and, and this is a woman who could justify eating candy 24-7. I'm going to have to just look this up because, believe me, it can be done. She did it. All right, let's see what we got here. All righty. Okay, somebody pays attention to our videos. Only three small pieces of day. This is just incredible. This is little packets of moist cat food. It's a complete nutritional adult and kitten food. And I've got five of these little buggers here. Chicken dinner in gravy. This is for Audie. He's going to be thrilled. You know, he usually gets dry cat food, 
and I sprinkled tre treats on it. And I think I told you all when I came back from the hospital after having my knee replacement surgery, I was only gone one day. My neighbor Jane was looking after him and all he did when I came home was tell me, no, Jane gave me more treats than that. I'm not eating this. You need to put more treats. Jane put more treats on there. Where are my treats? Jane let me do this. Jane let me do that. It was terrible. The cat got so, so spoiled. Oh, you know, the worst part of it is I am eventually going to have to go back and get the other knee replaced. And I will be asking Jane if she will come over here and keep an eye on Audie when I'm gone. And you know, he's going to give me the same hard time when I come back. And Jane let me go out twice. Jane didn't make me do this. Jane said I didn't have to use the litter box. It's just so spoiled. And this is Dove Beauty Bar. And remember, we've discussed this already. All soaps are antibacterial soaps. If push comes to shove, not that I would suggest you use an elegant soap like this for the purpose, but you could scrub your kitchen counters or your dishes or your floor or your cat with this kind of soap and you would not have problems. It will clean just as well as any other product you would use for the purpose and it's antibacterial. So remember, if you have soap, you have antibacterial soap. The words antibacterial are just, it's just a marketing thing because all soap is antibacterial. That's one, as I've said before, there is no need for you to take my word for it. Go check the CDC. They will tell you the same thing. Um, it, it's just Somebody just got clever and came up with a smart little marketing gimmick, and now we're all looking for antibacterial everything. But um, soap, by the way, that's going straight into the, um, the little container under my bed because I realized, uh, although I have things like toilet paper and baby wipes there, I did not have soap, and I just realized that now. Um, that I neglected to grab a few bars of soap to stick in there. All right, 90-second roasted chicken rice. Let's see. Um, you know what? You just you just put this in the microwave for 90 seconds and voila, dinner. Now, you might be thinking, what happens if you have an emergency and you have no microwave, no power? What about something like this? If it will cook in the microwave in 90 seconds, that means all you need to do to cook this out in your backyard on an open fire or you know on the road as you are running from zombies all you're going to need is to heat it through that's what 90 second microwave cooking is done doing this um I'm, probably, I'm sure it says so somewhere here but if it cooks in 90 seconds in the microwave that means it's pre-cooked so all you have to do is reheat it 90 seconds in the microwave is, you know, maybe the same 90 seconds in a nice hot cast iron skillet, just stirring it up and letting it heat. That So that is very clever. That is very emergency friendly. And to be honest with you, I never really thought of foods like this. But this appears to be a heavy duty plastic pouch that will really hold up. Um, this is the Kroger brand. Kroger is a, um, a chain of stores that's not around here. I remember Kroger from when I lived in the Midwest, uh, but we don't have Kroger stores in my area. I don't recall ever having seen them anywhere I've lived on the East Coast. They might be somewhere, but I don't recall seeing them. Um, Midwest. 
I, I'm going to have to look for things like this because, as I say, 90 seconds in the microwave means absolutely less than three minutes in any other cooking method. So, smart. Because when you are running from the zombies or whatever you are running from, or, you know, fleeing the, the rising tides, you really don't have an hour to prepare dinner. If you are in a difficult situation, the snow is coming down, your family is getting snowed in, you've lost all your power, and, you know, you have to resort to cooking dinner, you know, out on the barbecue, or you brought, you know, the little Weber grill into the kitchen and started cooking in there. And by the way, I've known people who have done that, particularly in, you know, in difficult situations where the power's all been out, it's been in the winter time. That is not something you want to do. Um, if you decide that your only option for cooking your dinner is using the grill, do it on the porch or the patio. Don't bring it indoors. That's potentially very, very dangerous. And as I say, I I'm not saying this because I think you're all idiots. I'm saying this because I've known idiots who've done that. And it seemed like real good ideas to them at the time. And of course, you know, those idiots all had college degrees. So what can I say? Maybe that's saying something right there. Um, but yeah, I have to take a look at adding some more foods like this. Quick cook. Um, uh, rice is, goodness, rice is virtually wall-to-wall -wall carbohydrates, which means lots of energy. Um, the roasted chicken rice. Let's take a look at our ingredients here. Water. Long grain parboiled rice, so we know it's cooked, contains less than 2% of chicken meat, including chicken juices, hydrolyzed soy and corn protein, potato flour, natural flavors, autolyzed yeast extract, carrot powder, turmeric, dehydrated carrots, chicken fat, extractives of turmeric for color, maltodextrin, yeast extract, salt spices, iron, iron um, ferric orthophosphate, niacin thiamine, uh, thiamine mononitrate, folic acid, um, xanthic gum contains soy, um, Given the fact that this is more chicken-flavored rice than anything else, this and one of those little cans of chicken, you know, that you get in the aisle next to the tuna fish, would probably make one of those great one-dish meals. So, this is fantastic, and if nothing else, this product alone opened up a whole new avenue of potential emergency supply shopping options for me, I need to take a look at fast cook products. So, thank you so much, Barbara Flowingbrook. And Audie, Audie is going to be pleased to know he's just forgotten. Although, Audie was never in any danger. Audie, I've not had to go out and get Audie food during this entire lockdown period because I get his food in very large quantities. He was a stray. And for stray animals, I've always believed, and maybe I'm just anthropomorphizing, I'm looking at my cat giving him more credit than he deserves, but I've always felt that when you have a stray, when you have an animal that's gone hungry, it's very important to reassure them it's never going to happen again. So I make sure Audie has large quantities of food somewhere. I make sure he's actually seen what's inside the giant vat of cat food. You know, it's like, look, here is food. There's enough food for you to last you a year. You can bring over your friends. You can drown yourself in this. Food is not going away. I have, however, had to go out and replenish his cat treats. So, um, that's one thing that I've learned. I need to find a way to store the cat treats because he likes them when they're fresh. If they're not real fresh, he's not real thrilled about it. So I need to look at that. But yes, no need to worry about Audie. All right. 
Um, I want to do at least a couple of word origins, but before we go on to that, let's talk briefly about the giveaway rules. And remember, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We're just going to do a blitz. These are the P-38 military can openers. And uh, the timing just worked out really well with our survival box and our survival can opener. These little itty bitty can openers, well, first of all, can you see the little hole? You can pop that on a key ring. And people have said they have done that. Uh, I personally don't know if I would want this on a key ring. I might be inclined to forget I had it there and then do something stupid like, you know, walk into the state police station without declaring I have a weapon. Um, uh, by the way, I did that once and fortunately they were very good natured about it. Uh, it was a small knife that was on, it was on a key ring that I didn't even realize I had in the bottom of my handbag. Um, they were nice, but they didn't have to be because they could, they can actually arrest you for something like that. Anyway, you can go on YouTube. If you don't know how to use one of these, just write in P38 military can opener, how to you get tons of instruction videos. I believe I said yesterday, I had looked at two of them. We're not talking inspired videos. This is not like, you know, Richard Burton explaining how to... These are just a couple of good old boys saying, I got me a can opener, and if I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to show you. But they do, in fact, get the job done. So, giveaway rules. Um, you can post whenever you want, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning when the video first posts. Just post can opener can opener that way i'll know that your post is for the contest when 12 noon rolls around i am going to make a post at the top of it, the very very top um and it's going to be a pinned comment now people had said to me in yesterday's video we couldn't find your pinned comment that's because once the contest was over, I unpinned it. It wasn't pinned any longer. So this pin, this con, this comment is not going to be pinned until 12 noon. At 12 noon, there's going to be a pinned comment that'll be at the very, very top of the comments. And it's going to have a list of the winners and an email address saying, you know, send your name and address to this email address. And then once we've got 10 winners, I'm going to unpin the comments, uh, the contest, the con uh, I'm going to unpin that comment. The contest will be over. Um, if I do not get responses, I'm going to leave each name up there for at least 30 minutes. So maybe it'll be 30 minutes. Maybe it'll be 40 minutes, you know, but I will leave it up for at least 30 minutes. And then if there's been no response from that name, I'm taking it off. I'm going to put up different names. Um, so I'm just going to run through it until I get 10 winners. I think that because it's a blitz contest, it's starting at noon. With any luck at all, it will be ending at 1 o'clock. So that should be more than enough time. I'm grabbing names, putting them up. So check back 12 noon New York City time. Um, and we've talked about the time zone issues. Uh, this is Eastern Standard Time, New York City time for those of you who are not in the US. For people in you know other parts of the world, Eastern Standard Time is a meaningless concept. What they need to know is New York City time. So good luck, everybody. All I need from you is a comment saying can opener. I will get your name from that comment. I will post it in the pinned comment at the top. And in fact, I'm even going to write pinned comment. So we're not going to miss out on that. You go and follow the instructions on the comment. That's all you need to do. But remember, you are going to have to email me. So if you don't have email capabilities, 
there's probably no point in entering the contest because you're not going to be able to tell me where to mail your can opener. Um, so, good luck everybody. Let's take a quick look at Word Origins and because I want to close on a merry little note, and I am getting a chuckle out of this guy. All right. Um, this, boy, this is fertile ground. Romantic stories of words about women. Trust me, with this guy's sensibilities, this should be interesting. Coquette. Once applied to men. Men used to have a share in this word, but the girls finally took over. Coquette comes from the French word coke, cock, and first referred to someone who behaved like a barnyard cock, in the sense he means rooster, with his strutting gait and amorous habits. Later, the word went completely feminine, and we discovered the coquette defined in a 17th century dictionary as, quote, a frisking and flipperous minx. Oh my. The nearest male counterpart for this word is cocky. No, today we have things like man whore. All right. Courtesan, formerly a perfect lady. In the beginning, this lady, as her name implies, was merely a perfectly proper member of the court circle. But since her morals were often no better than they should be, she turned into a court mistress. The term courtesan is rarely used of a prostitute. Um, interesting phrasing, uh, not grammatically correct. There is a nice distinction here that was aptly pointed out by a 17th century writer named Charfam. Your whore, he says, is for every rascal, but your courtesan is for your courtier. Uh, and it is entertaining to know in this connection that court plaster was also named because the courtesans and other ladies of the court cut bits of plaster into fancy shapes and wore these black patches on the face or shoulders. That I did not know. Damask, soft as a rose. This fine patterned fabric was named for the city of Damascus and the damask cheeks of the English ladies to which the romantic poets paid such high tribute were so called because they resembled the fine pink rose known as Damask Rose, which was also named for the Syrian city Damascus. So, and the rest of us do not get those lovely damask cheeks because we don't live on an island. Um, I actually read a long medical um, explanation of why it's said that English women have such lovely complexions, you know, and apparently it's life on an island. So before I go, very quickly, because I know this is already a bit over long, um, I found out this morning that allegedly our area is starting to open back up this Friday. So that might mean, well, I don't know what it means for me actually. It, because I don't know what's opening. For all I know, it could be like more gas stations opening. It could mean, you know, that, that you're allowed to have church services again. But some things are opening. What well, Obviously, what I'm hoping for is maybe there will be a haircut in my not-too-distant future because this is just... Um, I don't even know what to say anymore. Um, it's hopeless. All right, good luck to everybody in the giveaway today, and I will see you all tomorrow.